So browsers have a lot of built-in security features, and one of the most important one is something called course or cross-origin resource sharing. It's meant to keep websites separated, to make sure that one can't mess with another, and for the most part, it works really well. But today, I want to show you a little something different. We're not going to be breaking the course, don't worry. Instead, we're going to be using it. And maybe if you want to check out my course, which is down in the description box below to learn hacking, then feel free to do so. So the website that we have in front of us is a simple login page, which has two input fields, one for the username and one is for the password. Once we enter something, for example, test and test again, and we click on login, we can see that the website works pretty much normally. We have the invalid credentials message and we have a 401 status code, which again says in the preview within the J JSON message says the invalid credentials. Okay, let's see how browsers actually work. So we can right click on this on this request, go copy and then copy as fetch. Then go over to the different website and open up the, again, Chrome developer tools and navigate over to the console. Here is where kind of our magic will happen. So we can paste this request right over here and try to send it to see what will happen. Ah, there we go. Access to fetch at localhost port 3000 login from origin null has been blocked by the cross origin resource sharing policy. And here is the network. We can see two requests instead of a one. The first request which absolutely happens is a pre-flight request, which basically has to happen once we're sending cross origin requests. And this is also the request method options. It will basically go on this website, go on the server and see what can happen. Do we have access control allow origin header present and after that, it basically understands whether that's present or not, and that will determine whether the request will go through or fail, like in our case. Since the pre-flight request doesn't have the access control allow origin header present, the absolutely request failed because, of course, that doesn't happen. And you can see here, the response to pre-flight request doesn't pass the access control check. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. It is a very simple thing. Okay, so how can we get, a get around this? very simple we can resend this request but instead of using course mode we can use something known as the no course mode but there are some drawbacks to take from this if we send this request you can see that it absolutely did work but we get 401 unauthorized because we basically submitted the wrong credentials do you not have any idea what can we exploit here maybe we can create our own botnet basically where people just open the link and it cracks the password for us wouldn't that be cool I mean, it would be cool if it were possible, but the browsers are now way more secure. Back in the day it was, but now it's absolutely secure. But why is it secure? <laughs> well, we need to do a little bit of more digging to find that. When you send a request in the no chorus mode, it basically restricts you from reading anything. You can't even read the status code, you can't even read the headers, body, anything from the request that you just sent is impossible to be read. Okay, so here is the ape3.js file, which is responsible for hosting this web application. We can see that it uses express, and also we can see that it uses express rate limit module, which is interesting. And here we have the users, which is admin, John, and their passwords. And then we have here store bad info per IP comment. So this basically indicates to us that there is some interesting stuff happening like rate limiting on the login functionality. So let's actually dig deeper. And here we can see that there is middleware implemented to basically prevent you from sending way too many requests on any of the domains, um, any of the paths, I'm sorry, not just the login. And here, as you can see, is how it goes. It basically stores the IP of the user and then it checks whether that IP has been banned. And that's basically checked here. Otherwise, if it wasn't banned, we can see that we have max five is the maximum attempt before we trigger the handler, which is basically responsible for banning us. And as you can see, we basically have here a ban time, which is basically determined by a exponential rise of the requests. So for example, if the more requests are to come in from the IP, the IP time, IP ban time would be significantly larger. And that's about that. And as you can see, here is the message which just tells us that we have been banned from too many login attempts. And this, honestly, is very secure. And from what we can take from this is that we have an effective rate limit functionality on the website and there is no way to exploit this. Wrong. There is a way to exploit this. And I'm about to show you, but trust me, it gets very weird too. 
the login functionality also is a smart to look at, but we don't actually have to waste our time looking at this too much because we already understand how it works. We basically take the username and the password from the request body, we check whether that's valid, and basically on the successful login, we basically reset the band count for the IP. But this is optional as said here. We didn't actually have to do that. So for us to basically reset the rate limit, we need to have a one successful login. But most of the most of the websites we use today won't do that, but I just done that for the sake of this video. Okay, we we are back to browsers. How can we actually exploit this website if it all seems secure? Well, there is a way to do that. See, once you send a no course, you can't read what the website has responded to you. But there is a small problem. Can you guess what the problem is? Or not even a problem, just a small fact. Whether you can read or not read, this was a successful request to the domain localhost port 3000 slash login. It is a successful request, whether we can read or not, it has been successful. The best explain this, see, I'm going to be using a paint a little bit here, but the best explain all of this is basically this is you. And this is your browser, maybe Brave, maybe Chrome, I don't know. And once you send a request to a website, it first things first goes to your browser and then your browser sends a request to your website like so. As you can see, you send a one request and the browser, basically you click a button maybe and the browser says, hey, this is a request I want to send to the website and the website responds to you and then the website, the browser displays what the website has responded to you so you can read it. Okay, that's nice, but what if we open a link which basically just opens a link and it sends millions of requests to the website for us without us actually triggering that? Is that possible? Yes, and the browser just gets us banned and the browser tells us, hey, you have been banned from this website because you sent way too many requests. Is this a possible thing? Absolutely, it is. And the vulnerability here is that the website wasn't checking the origin where those requests were coming from before banning the IP. So the exploit script would look something like this. We can basically copy this up right over here so we can copy this request and we can create a for loop. And let's say just 100 requests. So we will send only 100 requests once the victim loads this exploit HTML file. So let's basically open up. And as you can see, this is the exploit HTML file. So once I refresh this, I will go over to the network so it's easier for you to kind of see. As soon as I refresh this page, boom. In a matter of a second, we have sent 100 failed login attempts. And if we refresh here, you can see that we have been banned for almost 900 seconds. That's insane. And this is how kind of attackers can abuse this such behavior to basically knock victims off of the website for an extended period of time. Imagine the victim was in a meeting and then the attacker just delivers this link to them and once they open it, they're boom, they're DDoSed from, they're DOSed actually from the meeting. And they have to wait this extended period of time before the ban expires. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, comment down below. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.